Hi, my name is Garrick Beebe. I'm here today to talk to you about the uh, auto body industry and tell you a little bit about my business, Resurrected Rod and Custom, here in Wayne, Nebraska. First off, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, born and raised in Wakefield, Nebraska. Graduated high school there in 2007. Uh, been a gearhead my whole life, been around cars. Um, growing up knew somehow I wanted to be involved in the automotive industry. Um, so like I said, I graduated high school in 2007. I moved down to Lincoln and attended Nebraska Wesleyan University. Um, graduated there in 2011 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Physics. Um, after graduating from Nebraska Wesleyan, I attended the University of Nebraska in Lincoln, and I was working on my Master's in Mechanical Engineering. Um, got to a point in my college career where I was really frustrated between the guys who design stuff and the guys who work on stuff. Um, so I opted not to finish my mechanical engineering degree. Called my parents one night when I was doing homework and I said, hey, uh, I think I'm going to quit pursuing my uh, master's degree and I'm going to go to tech school. Um, I think they might have been thrown off a little bit and said, geez, you want to go to tech school? I said, yeah, I think it's it's really what I wanted to do. So 2013, I moved out to Laramie, Wyoming. I attended Wyo Tech. Um, I specialized in automotive technician. So your everyday type of new car mechanic. And I specialized in street rod fabrication and trim and upholstery. So I lived out in Laramie for a year. And then after I graduated out there, I uh, moved back to Wayne and opened my business, Resurrected Rod and Custom. So kind of how the shop works is obviously I'm the owner. I'm involved in the day-to-day, -day, hands-on with the guys. Um, we've got multiple positions here. Um, got an office manager. We got a guy that answers the phone, does the invoicing, does the ordering, um, communicates with vendors, gets parts lined up, uh, a lot of customer relations and uh, so forth. Uh, and then you get into the guys that are kind of behind the scenes. So we've got auto body technicians. Uh, we got three guys that are in the body shop, uh, multi-talented uh, body men, painters, um, assembly type of guys. Um, all the guys in the shop are what I would say specialized in their own division, but they uh, do bridge across to, to different area, areas. Um, we've got an upholster, so he does all of our interior work. Uh, so seat covers, does carpet, headliner, door panels, um, mild to wild interiors, something more original equipment manufacturer looking all the way to one-off custom. Um, we've got drivetrain technician. He does a lot of our suspension work, our brake work, our wheels and tires, um, framework, heavy duty fabrication. Um, and then we also have a wiring technician that he pretty much sticks strictly to the wiring and the electronics in, ve in vehicles. Uh, like I had mentioned, they do bridge back and forth. Um, so they're not necessarily specific to their area. Um, we also have fabricators. We've got heavy duty fabricators that do uh, frame building, chassis building, um, rear end building, roll cage building, anything like that. We've got light duty sheet metal fabricators that are going to do uh, rust repair panels, repairing rust, um, fabricating, you know, a, a one off tractor hood for a customer. Just, just really depends on what the customer wants um, with our... Uh, light duty fabricator that can pretty much make anything from scratch. And then we do offer a summer intern program as well. So about every summer, we uh, get a student from Northeast Community College that comes in on the auto body side. Um, you know, the, I'm not gonna send an intern in to paint a car necessarily right away, um, but they're gonna do a lot of sanding, priming. Um, they might paint some smaller pieces for me. Um, they're gonna sweep the floor, they're gonna take out the trash, but in our industry, you really start from the bottom and then you work your way up. Um, so that's kind of the, the job titles of the guys in the shop. Um, so we're obviously more than just auto body um, itself. You know, we do full frame off restorations, custom work, custom paint, things like that. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the, how the restoration process works. Um, so the office manager gets a call, customer contacts them, says, 
I've got a 1964 Impala that I want to restore. I know it needs rust repair, needs a whole new interior, body and paint, wiring, everything like that. So we iron out the details with the customer. They decide, okay, we got to get the rust fixed and we want to take this 64 Impala and bring it back to like it was sitting on the showroom floor. So we try and do everything exactly how the manufacturer would have presented it back in 1964. New wiring, um, brakes rebuilt, transmission rebuilt, engine rebuilt, um, all the rust repaired. Um, trim is going to be sent off to be polished and straightened and ready to go back on. Interior is going to be um, either made from scratch or we'll get pre-made kits once in a while. Um, so we go through all of this, we're evaluating the projects, we go through the customer's needs, rust repair, engine rebuild, and then we go through the customer's wants. Um, maybe it's not so much an OE restoration, but more of a custom restoration. And the owner says, well, I want to put two 12 inch subs in the back and a thousand watt amp, or I want to do shaved door, door handles, or I want to do one piece side glass. So we, we really break it down into their needs and their wants. Um, the next thing we do is we draft an estimate. The tough thing in our industry is that it's really hard to get a, give a customer concrete numbers for what we do because we really don't know until we're into it. Um, so we're going to give them a range. We're going to ask them, you know, what are you looking for? What are you looking for an end result? Do you want a driver that you can take down the street that looks really nice? Or do you want a car that you're going to take out to Colorado, down to Texas, out to the East Coast and show it in car shows and bring trophies home? Because there is definitely a uh, wide range of budgets and what a customer wants to spend when doing a restoration. So we communicate with the customer, decide, you know, X is my budget. And uh, if we go a little bit more, we go a little bit more, but it's not the end of the world. So we say, okay, we are, uh, you're on the books. You're ready to get your vehicle in and do a restoration. So we schedule the project. We get it in. First thing we're going to do is we're going to tear it down. We're going to blueprint it. We're going to take trim off. We're going to take glass out. We're going to take interior out, wiring, chassis gets disassembled. Pretty much we're going to blow it into a thousand pieces. Everything gets bagged and tagged. Everything gets labeled. Um, and then we start uh, our list of the parts we need. Hey, we know it needs new headlights. Um, know it needs a new wiring harness. Pretty much all the soft goods in the interior were junk. So um, let's get carpet ordered, let's get headliner ordered, let's get seat foam ordered. Um, so that list is usually pretty long. Um, you know, we're not talking just five or 10 items. We're talking 150 to 250 different items that we have to order. Uh, we do have vendor, we do have vendors that are specific to a component. So we've got vendors out there that sell us just radios or they sell us just brake lines, or they sell us just carpet. And on the contrary, we've got other vendors that are more versatile, and they'll maybe sell us steering wheels, steering columns, headlights, and exterior trim. So it just kind of depends on what vendor we're working with at the time. Um, so we, it's all the cars blueprinted. First, it's gonna go in, um, we're gonna do all our rust repair. So we're gonna sandblast the body, we're gonna sandblast the parts, uh, the guys in the body shop are going to take the freshly stripped parts and they're going to put them into an epoxy primer. That epoxy primer basically gives us the corrosion protection that we need as a base. So everything goes into a black epoxy primer. Rest, re rest repair is done. Epoxy primer is done. It's into the body shop. So we're going to start going in with our fill primer. Any dents, dings, anything like that, we're going to pull. We're going to straighten the sheet metal and then we are gonna put body filler over any low spot, any high spots that we need to knock down. So we go in and we start sanding. So we're gonna prime and then we're gonna sand, we're gonna pull it out of the paint booth and we're gonna, we're gonna prime it and we're gonna sand it again. Um, on a typical restorations, we're usually doing two rounds of priming on all the exterior components. When you get into the higher end uh, show cars, uh, you get into the three, four different rounds of primer just to make everything uh, smooth as glass. Uh, so we get our priming done and then it's actually going to go back over to the mechanical side of things and uh, 
they're going to get suspension bolted back under, they're going to get uh, wiring roughed in, they're going to get air conditioning systems mocked up. Um, at this point, the exterior of the, of the car is in primer, the firewall is typically painted, and the underside of the car is typically painted as well as the chassis. So we can match the body back to the chassis, actually making it a rolling component at this point. Um, so the guys on the mechanical side, they might even route the exhaust at this point. Engines in, transmissions in, suspensions in, brakes done. Um, then we're gonna go back into the body shop with it. We're gonna give it a final sand. We're gonna go over every edge, every detail, make sure everything's perfect to how we want it. Uh, and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna seal it. We're gonna base coat it and we're gonna clear coat it. Um, in a restoration, about 90% of the time spent in the body shop is all up until the color actually goes on. Once color sprayed and clears, clear coats put on it, um, you know you're getting towards the end of, of the body shop phase of it. Um, so we've got it clear coated, pull it out, we unmask everything, and then we go into our assembly. We're gonna put windshield in, we're gonna put side glass in, we're gonna put dash pad in. Uh, then it's going to go back again to the mechanical guys. Uh, they're going to put gauges in. They're going to put any stereo components in that the customer wants. At this point, it's a running, driving, assembled car. Um, once all the exterior trim goes on, then it goes into the upholstery shop. We're going to put carpet, headliner in it, door panels. Um, we'll make the seats either from scratch or get pre-made covers. And uh, once we have all the technical work done on it. Now we do a shakedown. Uh, we take the car out, test drive it, put a couple hundred miles on it just to make sure there's no issues. Um, and it's very rare that we do a full restoration and we don't have something pop up, whether it's a rattle or this window needs adjusted just a little bit. We're usually going back on our full builds um, with a short punch list and just uh, correcting some of the minor, minor details. Get the project done, we're happy with it. We call the customer, say, hey, your car's done. Why don't you come in and uh, let's go through it. So we'll bring the customer in. Majority of the time, the customers are extremely emotionally attached to their projects, whether it was a grandpa's car or it was an uncle's car, or this was the car I was driving when I met my wife. Um, you know, we hear a lot of those stories and the projects that we work on, and it's not necessarily every project, but I would say 90% of the time, the projects have some kind of an emotional tie to the owner. Um, so we get the car done, customer's happy, he takes it, it's his to do with, with it what he wants. So in, in our industry, um, some ways to really achieve success um, the big thing is you got to have a passion. You got to have a passion for what you're working on. Um, about all of my guys um, are gearheads. They get off work, they go home, and they work on their own vehicles. On the weekends, what are they doing? They're working on their own projects, um, you know, building something for, for themselves. So, you know, passion is probably the most important part you have to have in the industry. Uh, the other thing is knowledge. Uh, you know, you're going to gain knowledge with going through schools, going to a tech school, doing hands-on learning. Um, you got to be motivated. You got to show up to work on time. Um, you know, you, you can't be on your phone all day. Um, no, don't get me wrong. We, we do grab our phones once in a while if we got to look up, you know, hey, I, I can't figure out how to get this part up, part off. Well, there's probably a resource out there on the internet that someone's done it before. Um, and we can use that kind of as a cheat sheet. Um, you got to have patience in our industry. Uh, our restorations take a long time. Um, it's not crazy on a show car um, to have, you know, 500 to 1,000 hours of body work done on it, depending on what the, what the customer's after. Attendance is a huge thing. Um, no calls, no shows do not go over well in our industry. Um, it, I know every shop owner is different, um, but I'm super flexible. If my guys have a dentist appointment, you go to your dentist appointment. If, hey, my kid's got a high school choir concert, I got to get out of here at four, no problem. Um, the big, biggest thing is just communicating to me and communicating to the other guys, you know, when you're going to be here, when you're going to be gone. Um, attention to detail. Uh, you got to be very detail-orientated in, uh, in our industry. Um, 
we don't put out a product that that uh, we're ashamed of. You know, we're going to put out a product that's perfect and that has our name on it. Um, so, you know, whether it's down to how you're finishing this weld or how you're in installing this glass, um, there, there's a huge emphasis on attention to detail. Um, so pros and cons in our industry, uh, which like I mentioned, were a little bit different than a typical collision shop. Um, our, our industry, you know, in the restoration side of things, it's super rewarding. Uh, it's, it's great to, to see the look on the customer's face when they get their finished product back and they go, oh man, this was all worth it. You know, we've seen grown men cry after getting their uh, projects back. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's super, super rewarding in that aspect. Just the, the customer relationships that you build throughout a, throughout a project, you know, on, on a involved build, uh, it's nothing to talk to the customer two, three times a week. Hey, we're uh, trying to finalize this interior um, color. You know, what's your input? We're thinking kind of a dark blue, but, you know, we want your input before we, before we spray it. Um, another pro in our industry, you know, we're seeing work start to finish. We're not just a body shop. We're not just an upholstery shop. We're not just a mechanical shop. You know, we see the build start to finish. The project doesn't leave our eyes um, until it's done. Uh, for me, a huge pro is uh, owning my own business. Um, you know, being able to create jobs for my guys, uh, bringing, bringing a lot back to the community. Um, the, co the cons in uh, my industry is obviously there's a ton of financial risk in owning your own business. You know, there's a ton of overhead, there's equipment that you need, there's inventory that you have to have on the shelves. Yeah, you might have $5,000 worth of inventory on the shelf and use $20 of it a month. Um, but you just got to have that inventory there uh, in case you run into something. You don't want to wait a week or two weeks for that part to come in. Hey, we've got it on the shelf. Grab it. Keep going. Uh, another con that you do see more in the collision industry is the varying workflow. Um, we're fortunate enough that we are busy that we don't really see that varying workflow. Uh, but on the collision side of things, um, you know, the time that body shops are the busiest is during harvest because the uh, deer and animals are being stirred up out of the fields they're crossing the highways people are seeing uh, you know a lot more a lot more wildlife active during harvest time so you get those people that run into deer or hit a raccoon um, and then the the uh, another time when a body shop will become really busy is the first snowstorm or ice storm people kind of forget how to drive they're out it's a sheet of ice and uh, boom, all of a sudden they're at a stoplight and they get rear-ended. It's got to go to somebody, goes to a collision shop to get it fixed. Um, job market uh, in our industry, obviously location is huge. Uh, we're fortunate enough that we've got our name out there enough that, you know, we're, we're perfectly fine being uh, being in Wayne, Wayne Nebraska. Uh, people come to us. We've got customers from Texas, Boston, Colorado. Um, you know, they are, there's not really a radius that we get our customers from because really with the work that they're looking to have done, they're going to come from, from anywhere. Um, you know, starting salaries in our industry, um, somebody coming in with no experience, you know, you're probably looking around that 15 to $16 an hour. Um, but, you know, as your work ethic proves and as you get more proficient in your duties, you know, you're looking more up into the mid 20s to high 20s for hourly wages. And with that, opportunities for advancement come with knowledge and experience. You know, if a guy walked in the door right now and said, hey, I love cars, I love working on them, I know what I'm doing, but I've never been in the industry, you know, he's going to be more on the lower end. On the contrary, you get somebody that walks in and says, hey, I've been in the industry for 10 years, um, I've worked here, here's my resume, take a look at it, you know, let me know what you can offer. You know, it, it, a guy in our industry coming in, if it should take 10 hours to do the job and it takes him seven to do it and it's done right, you know, he's a lot more valuable than a guy that comes in and we say, okay, this pays 10 hours and it takes him 15 hours to do. He's just not worth as much. Um, so in the collision industry, uh, us on the restoration side don't work so much on book time, but in the collision industry, um, you work off book time. So you can go right from the manufacturer's um, service manual 
and it'll say, okay, you got to fix and paint this box side. It should take you 15 hours. Well, if you go in, fix that box side, get it painted, and it takes you 11 and a half hours, you get paid for those 15 hours, not the 11 and a half hours that it took you. Um, on the contrary, if it's a 15 hour job and you're in a collision shop and it takes you 22 hours to do it, sorry, you only get paid for 15 hours because that's what the job pays. Um, so we don't see that as much on the restoration side of things, uh, but more in the auto body collision side of things, you're going to you're gonna see that. Um, some advice from me, uh, the more you know about the industry, the more valuable you are. You know, if you're an upholster and that's all you can do is upholstery, that's great. But if you're an upholster that can also build a rust repair panel from scratch, you're even more valuable. Um, you know, as high school students, I would say, you know, if you're interested in the restoration business or the restoration side of things or the auto body side of things, um, work with cars whenever you can. You know, whether it's demolition derbying or hobby cars or race cars or you build a go-kart from scratch, just being hands-on. Um, you're going to you're gonna learn a lot of experience just from being hands-on tinkering on stuff. Um, you know, if your dad or uncle's out in the garage and he's changing the oil on the mower, why don't you stop what you're doing and just watch him and ask him questions and, and, and look at how things work together. Um, another word of advice, you know, is, is to complete an accredited hands-on program. You know, Northeast Community College in Norfolk is really good in their auto body and technical uh, program, Southeast Community College in Milford, um, WIT, Western Iowa Tech, uh, YO Tech is where I went. I had a great experience out there, had really good professors, and I learned a lot of stuff while I was out there. Also, McPherson College down in Kansas, they have a restoration program, and it's unique because they're a four-year school that offers a restoration program. Um, so that's a little bit about my business and kind of what we do and I'm gonna take you out and we'll just go through some of the projects and I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing on them. So here's a 53 Dodge panel that we're working on. Um, this is a complete frame off restoration. Uh, customer brought it to us, it was actually already painted um, what we had to do is we had to go in and we had to finish all of the wiring on the inside. Um, full custom interior getting put in it, vintage air, air conditioning, uh, TV monitors, uh, got the suspension lined up. Uh, just a ton of behind the scenes work that we had to do on this one. Here's a 53 Ford pickup that's in the upholstery shop right now. Uh, making a full custom one-off interior in this one. Uh, custom leather seats, custom carpet, custom headliner, steering wheel wrapped, uh, and then we'd actually did do some uh, shifter work for him as well that he was having some issues with. Here's a CJ Jeep that we're working on right now, doing some suspension work on this as well as a full rewire. We actually built the dash pretty much from scratch and we're getting the dash uh, back together for him. So uh, about halfway through this project. Over here, we got a 37 Chevy sedan. Customer came to us with this. It was actually already painted. We uh, doing a full interior in it. We got to finish some wiring for him, finish exhaust. We're getting side glass set in it and uh, weather stripping and some odds and ends like that. Over here, we've got an 85 Silverado that we did a full restoration on. Uh, pretty much a start to finish build on this. Uh, it's a big block truck. We had the big block rebuilt, stripped all the body panels down to bare, uh, did the two-tone stripe for them. We bed lined the box. Uh, we, were, we were able to reuse a majority of the wiring since it's not a super old vehicle. Um, custom leather seats in it, new dash pad. Right now you can see we're just finishing up the gauges and the HVAC, uh, getting it back together. Here's the six on the hoist here. We've got a 67 Comet Caliente convertible. This was a full uh, frame off restoration as well. Uh, super clean Nebraska car, surprisingly. We did do some rust repair on it. Um, so we're just kind of buttoning up this one, stripped it all down to bare, did our primers, did our filler work, did our sanding, uh, made our interior from scratch, did the convertible top, 
full rewire on it. Suspension's been gone through, new brakes, new brake lines, all of that. So that is a full restoration that we're completing. Here we got a Ford Torino. Customer brought this to us. It was already painted. Uh, did not have any of the interior in it. We actually ended up going through and we did a, did a full stock appearing interior for them. Did exhaust on it, got the brakes functioning, did some wiring work. Pretty much got it roadworthy for him to enjoy. I'll take you into the body shop. Um, got a couple things going on in there right now. So we've got a 65 Corvette here um, that we're doing for a customer. It is a, what I would call a true hot rod. It's got a full tube chassis underneath it. Um, Don Hardy LS motor in it, full rewire, um, suspension upgrades. This thing's gonna run about 600 horse down the road. Um, so back here on the rotisserie, you can see we've got the chassis that was actually stripped, sandblasted, and then epoxied. So it's, it's just in black epoxy right now. Next phase on this, um, we'll do some body work on the chassis as we continue to uh, work on the body of the Corvette as well. We've got some fiberglass repairs to do. We got to get the front nose glued back on, uh, as well as making a 600 horsepower engine and transmission fit inside. So a lot of custom work done on this one, uh, but it, the end result is gonna be pretty awesome. So thanks for, uh, listening today to my presentation like i said really if you want to get involved in this industry the biggest thing is to be uh to get hands on and get involved shop classes anything like that uh, that can just help you uh, grow in your knowledge of the industry so uh once again thanks for listening to me